In this video, I'm gonna give you guys 10 tips or tricks on making your chain and sprocket install 10 times easier. What's happening guys, Greg Kirchko here. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm continuing with my 1999 KX250 build and I've got a set of primary drive chain and sprockets thanks to the guys over at Rocky Mountain ATVMC. And the goal of this video is to make your life way easier when installing your chain and sprockets on your dirt bike. So let's dive into it. So tip one is to start with the front sprocket first by taking the nut or bolt off. As you see here on the 1999 KX250, there's actually just a circlip that I need to pop off, but most models do have either a bolt like the Hondas or a nut like the Yamahas, for example, that you need to remove first. The most important thing is to never put the bike in gear to remove this nut. So you always wanna step on the rear brake while the chain is still on the bike. You never wanna put the bike in gear and try to remove that bolt because you could destroy the gears on the inside of the motor. So always press the rear brake when taking off this nut. And guys, if you're wondering how to do that with only one person, you can't tell me that you can't come on the other side of the bike, put your foot on the rear brake here, and then lean over with either the impact gun and or a big socket and knock that bolt or nut free. So that's just a quick method on how to get that part done without two people. So now that that front sprocket bolt is off, then you can go ahead and pop this master link off with a set of pliers. They do make a set of special master clip pliers for this, but it can be done with normal pliers with one end on the pin, the left side pin, and the other end on the right side of that clip. Tip number two here, so now you can go ahead and take that front sprocket off, and before you do, notice how the front sprocket does come off, because you see how we've got this little cutout here on the front, but then when we flip it over on the back, it's just flat. So sometimes these can be offset, but if this, this is an OEM sprocket, you just wanna remember which way it goes on. And then looking at the new primary drive front sprocket, it looks like both sides are flat. It looks like I'm gonna put the logo and the number of the teeth facing out compared to the back side, so. So I got the tire removed from the bike and up on my tire stand here. Not much to be said about taking the rear sprocket off except using the box end side of the wrench when you go take those nuts off. Might even have to use a dead blow hammer like you see here to knock that nut free. So the sprocket that was on it really wasn't in bad shape. You can tell if it's in bad shape if they're a little bit more cupped out, but the tip of the new sprocket here, you can see how it's flat at the top where it's just a little bit more peaky. Um, on the old sprocket, but like I said, it's still in great shape. I just like the color of the new sprocket and I just like all the same brand on there to complete the set. So next tip is using medium strength thread locker on the threads of the sprocket bolts here because even though they have locking nuts, you still don't want them to come undone. The last thing you want is that nut to start backing out because it can cause catastrophic damage to your swing arm and other parts of the bike. A little cool trick here too is that you can put some thread locker on the back of the bolt here. Um, basically that'll help that bolt stay in place and uh, not back out as well. So a couple tricks there for you guys. Next tip, before you go to put your rear wheel back on, take the chain adjusters out and put a little anti-seize on them because if those chain adjuster bolts seize up in the swing arm, it's a pain in the butt to get those out. So if you haven't done it in a while or have never done it, this is a great idea to do when you're changing the chain sprockets. Next tip, when you guys go to put that front sprocket back on, if you have one of these C-clips like the Kawasaki's here, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that thing snaps right into the slot. So double check, make sure you kind of push it down on the front and sides. You'll hear it click in there, but you wanna make sure that thing is completely seated in the slot on the counter shaft. And if you have a bolt or a nut, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you torque that bolt or nut to the proper spec in your owner's manual. Again, you're not gonna to wanna to jam the shifter in gear. You're gonna to wanna to follow the same process as you did when you took the nut or bolt off. You will have to wait till you put the chain back on, however, but once you do, put that chain back on, slam the rear brake, and then you'll be able to torque that nut or bolt to the spec in your manual. 
Next tip, with the chain adjusters here, one would think that you would want to screw the bolt in all the way so there's no gap, basically saying that you'd have the most amount of chain adjustment when that chain loosens up. But there's two problems with that method. One, if you take out all of the play in the bolt, what happens is the front tire can slide too far forward and it ends up hitting the front of the swing arm or your mud flap here. Another reason why you don't want that bolt all the way up against the swing arm is because later on it doesn't allow you to put a larger sprocket on the rear end if you do choose to go that way the chain will be too tight and you won't have enough slack in the chain in order to get that larger sprocket on so that's why i try to find a happy medium normally about midway here between the adjustment so what i'll do is i'll take the adjusters in just a little bit so the axle sits even within the adjustment space also to piggyback on where you put the adjusters, it's based on the chain as well. You see here how the chain comes together perfectly where the master link is going to go. So you just have to play with the adjusters and get them in a spot where the chain comes together perfectly for the master link here. Next tip coming at you. So for the sake of the video, I put the old chain back on because in many cases, the chain is not gonna fit perfectly like this gold chain did. So what you're gonna have to do is break the chain. Basically, you're gonna have to pop the pins out of one of the links in order to get the correct size chain. So this would be an example here where you'd break the chain in the wrong spot. You'd be breaking the chain and you'd be leaving the two outer plates and not the two inner plates. So what you wanna do is make sure you line up the chain and adjust it perfectly where you break the pin out here and you're leaving the two inner links so you can get that master link ultimately through that part of the chain. What you need to do is remove this pin along with this pin and there's two ways to do that. You can use a chain breaker. This is probably one of the best chain breakers you can buy. I'll link it in my description below. I use a cheaper one to save some money. It's got a red handle. I gotta tell you the thing is a piece of crap. It maybe worked for one chain and I tried to use it on a second chain and the threads on the inside here stripped out. So the threads on this Motion Pro chain breaker are not gonna break and this thing will pop out those pins with no problem. The most important thing you need to know with the chain breaker method is that you don't want to try to drive one pin all the way out and then drive the next pin. You want to work back and forth between the pins, drive out the pin a little bit on one side, then drive out the pin a little bit on the next side. It's, this is going to make it much easier in the end to break that chain. The second method here, which I think is way more fun, is you use a grinder to grind off the heads of the pins. Then afterwards, once the pins are ground down enough, you can come in and use a chisel or a screwdriver to come in and pound that outer plate right off the chain. Next tip here, one of the most important things when putting this master link on, guys, is making sure the clip opening faces backward. So if this is the first time you're installing and chaining sprockets, the opening on the master link is gonna face to the rear of the bike because you don't wanna put the opening facing front because that's the direction the chain is going and this thing will pop right off. So make sure that opening is facing the rear. Next tip, chain slack is normally measured at the end of the chain slider here. So a good slack measurement is normally between two to two and a half inches. And my three fingers here is a little bit over two inches. So that's normally what I go by. Basically, you just wanna get your three fingers in there and measure the chain slack right behind the chain slider here. So as you see here, I've got a little extra. So I'll have to go and adjust the chain adjusters. The next tip to get the chain tightened is making sure that this rear axle nut here is just snug enough to keep the axle blocks against the chain adjusters. You don't want the axle nut so loose that the rear axle can slide back and forth with your hands or just without anything at all. You wanna get the axle nut snugged up just enough where it's snug against the adjusters where the adjusters can still slide the whole wheel and axle back when you tighten the chain. Something that you have to play with a little bit to find that sweet tension, but when you do, it's gonna help you out a lot. Then the final tip, guys, for getting the chain adjusted is making sure the adjusters are even on both sides of the swing arm. It seems like an obvious thing, but I've seen it happen personally to myself. I had someone helping me work on my bike while I was at the track, and the chain looked like it had the right tension, but when I went to go look at the adjusters to make sure they were even after this gentleman did it, the axle was so cocked, I couldn't believe it. So guys, make sure that the chain adjusters are even. If you're having trouble figuring out whether it's even just by eyeballing it, take a digital caliper like this on both sides of the swing arm, measure from the back of the axle block to the end of the swing arm to double check that both sides are even. 
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this tips and tricks video on how to get the chain and sprockets installed on your dirt bike. If you have any questions, guys, definitely leave them in the comments below. Or if you have any other tips and tricks for the viewers watching this video, also leave them in the comments because one, it's gonna help me and it's gonna help other people watching this video. As always, these videos are brought to you by your support by clicking through my Rocky Mountain ATV MC link in my description below. You guys are directly supporting me in this channel when you click on that link and shop through parts at Rocky Mountain. So thank you as always for doing that. But that's gonna be a wrap on this video, guys. As always, ride hard, be safe, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.